Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. This is a quick video response to an incompetent scholar who is damaging the reputation of Western Quranic scholarship. He is refoiling the mistrust Muslims have on Orientalist works on the Quran. Viewers are already familiar with his incompetence, negligence, carelessness in his research, which is propelled by a polemical motivation instead of honest research in the field of Quranic manuscripts. You can't do academic level research on the field of the Quran unless you have a firm grounding of the Arabic language. When it comes to studying manuscripts for correction studies, anyone who has a good eyesight can spot changes done to the parchment or the leaf, where there is an erasure or an overwritten text or additional text with a different nib. But then, that, then to go on and suggest what the original intended meaning may have been requires reading and understanding of the text before you make any proposed suggestions. If your knowledge is Ar of Arabic is pretty basic on a beginner's level, you're bound to make childish mistakes. So in academic scholarship, we hope that the bar is raised when it comes to Quranic scholarship. So let's move on into the subject today. It's going to be a quick video, inshallah. Um, obviously, you have here, you can see in the slides, uh, I'm, I'm proposing the scribe is quite competent, but the reader who you see in the picture is quite incompetent. So just recently, a few days ago, he published a video about the British Library manuscript 2165. Um, and went through a particular page just to walk through to it and gave some examples. I'm going to focus on one particular example demonstrating what I'm going to highlight um, in, in detail um, exactly what the problems are. So let's first introduce um, this particular scholar himself saying what this issue is all about in the manuscript page. Let's move up just here two lines, and this is uh, once again an erasure of an olive, and the text as it stands without what has been erased does match the uh, the rasim that is standard, and you can see it is in the kuria in the passive sense uh, is recited. However, if we look at the way that this was first written with the olive in this manuscript, the verb ekra takes a different. Form. One of the ways that it could read is, and when I recite the Quran, which is a very interesting uh, formulation. It's certainly not the way that the Rasm reads today, but it would make sense in a, di in a different way. In other words, the verse would read, when I recite the Quran, listen to it and remain silent so that you may receive compassion, rather than as it is today when the Quran is recited in a passive sense, uh, listen to it and remain silent. So, Makes sense. It's interesting uh, that that manuscript was that this manuscript was first written that way. I don't know if that was the intended uh, meaning by the person who wrote it down, but that is how it was first written. So we've we've heard and I'm really what can I say? So let's just go through some of the observations. Um, he's proposing that the original could have read "I recite" in the first person. So presumably he's trying to say. The alif at the beginning, which is erased, would be the alif of Akra. Um, of course, um, that would mean I recite. And he makes the, the case that this looks quite interesting and it makes sense to him because that reading would be meaningful. Um, and didn't notice that the suggestion he's making is pretty much something that, you know, um, a basic beginner in Arabic language would not make as to what the text itself is written as it is. So before I go into detail breaking down the problems uh, with these readings or incompetence in reading, this subject illustrates an example of the hamzated verbs in Arabic known as al-fi'l al-mahmuz or in plural al-af'al al-mahmuza where you know if you have a triliteral verb, like the example here, qara'a, so the last letter is a hamza. Okay, 
So you have a hamzated verbs, and this is a hamza which is mutatarrif at the end, hamza al mutatarrifa. So when we have a hamza at the end of a verb, these actually follow certain morphophenomic changes, as we know, those who have studied the the, the, the science of imla. And at this stage, I propose those who are struggling, um, like this particular scholar himself, you know, get a book like this. Um, okay, this is Kitabu al Imla'i al Ta'alimi Uslubun Mutamayiz fi Ta'alim al Imla by Dr. Shawki al Ma'arri, published in uh, Dimashq in 2002. So, to, to illustrate further, so you have this word Qara'a, Qaf, Rahia, and Hamza. And as you can see, the final form of this can be different depending on, of course, the context, the persons, um, the numbers. Uh, we're talking about morphophenomic changes. So you can be on the alif, it, and the hamza can sit on top of the alif, or on the ya, or on the wow, or on just kursi in itself, um, or, or without a kursi. There's various ways you can write it. Um, in, in, in fact, the verb qara'a is actually quite standard uh, when it comes to learning um, this verb conjugation. So this is the perfect active case here. If it was in the passive voice, you'll say qura'a. And you do notice here how this verb, this particular last letter is written. Uh, and the qura'a, the hamza, is written over alif maqsura. And previously, when you looked at it, it was sitting on, on an alif. The hamza sitting on the alif here. If you have the mudari' form, you say yaqra'u. So you can see the form, aqra, how it's different from qurya, and with the final form changes um, specifically. So it's quite quite standard. When you learn. In fact, this verb is used to to students to learn this verb conjugation in this form and this is the the qaida of the hamza al mutatarrifa this is the hamza mutatarrifa which is tuktab fi akhir al kalima at the end of so if you have a hamza at the end of a word um, then these are the principles it's called al hamza al mutatarrifa so what we have to do is in its written form, we look at the harf alladhi qablaha. Look at the letter just before it. فَإِذَا كَانَ مَا قَبْلَهَا سَاكِنًا تُكْتَبْ عَلَى الصدر. So, if the letter before it is sakin, then you actually write it on the satr, on the line itself, without wow, ya, alif maqsura. وَإِذَا كَانَ مَا قَبْلَهَا مَفْتُوحًا تُكْتَبْ عَلَى الألف. So, if, if it has like a fatha, um, letter preceding it, you write on top of an alif. So if you have before a letter which has a dhamma, then you write on top of a waw. And before a letter which is preceded with a kasra, like in our case, it will be written on alif al maqsura. So it's not going to be written on alif on but alif al maqsura which is like a shape of a ya without the dots right and of course if it's connected with some domir pronouns then it works uh, like hamza al mutawassita the middle hamza and there are separate rules for this too so let's just move on to to understand the problem that um, uh, we have seen in his reading so here wa either so you have the alif dal and alif wa i Either, and there was an alif that he's saying it's been erased, and qurya, qaf, ra, and this is the alif maqsura all the way, as you can see, connected to the waw. This is how the writing style was in these particular manuscripts. The, the ya, or alif maqsura, they will just elongate it at the, you know, like this shape. Um, al, al Quran, so they, here's the word Quran. So, as you can see here, something has been erased here, and, and uh, the the scholar is proposing that this was an alif okay so if this is alif proposed i'm not going into detail into as to when this was 
erased whether he was actually erased by the same scribe now can you read this particular word as I recite Aqra you can't recite Aqra in any way shape or form based on the fact that you have an alif maqsura here because if it was an alif here where the hamza is supposed to be then you can say aqra but this particular shape form alif maqsura or the ya like shape will prevent us from reading aqra because this is only used for those particular word forms when the one preceding that will have a kasra so it would be quri'a so of course this initial intention of the scribe was Quri'a, because this is what this alif maqsura or the alif shape determines the reading. So it's possible. I mean, one can have various, um, you know, reasons why the scribe may have mistakes. The scribe possibly was trying to write what either Quri'a and then instead of writing Quri'a, he started writing Al Quran, thinking that he may have written Quri'a. So this is the alif of Al Quran here, and then moment he realized that he missed um, this Quri'a, just erased it and carried on so the scribe of course is quite competent here and we can see and I will demonstrate to you from the examples that we see in this British Library manuscript where other examples demonstrate the scribe's competency and at the same time our incompetency of our scholar who's trying to make suggestions of what the original reading is so if we were to see several examples from the same manuscript I don't have to go any further in other manuscripts so this is again from the folio 76 v in surah 26 199 ayah i've highlighted the portion here let's just just zoom it in so you can see here this is the word here is fa qaf ra and then alif here and the ha here fa qara'ahu of course one thing i need to mention it the way that we write now in terms of Hamza, we have a specific signs for Hamza in the early Quranic manuscripts. Hamza wasn't written as Hamza, as you can see. Hamza would have just been written where it would be normally sitting. So it would be just an alif or a wow or a ya or alif a maqsura or just his kursi on its own. So here is an example of faqara'ahu. So this is what is referring to your Hamza here. And this form has changed um, within this phenomic um, conjugation because of the way it is um, conjugated. If you go to another example here in folio 42V of the same manuscript, Surah Al-Isra 17, Ayah 106, and you can see here, وَقُرْآنًا فَرَقْنَاهُ لِتَقْرَأَهُ So here, Lam Ta Qaf Ra, again the Hamza here or the Alif and the Ha, لِتَقْرَأَهُ So as you can see again, how the Hamza, the form of it uh, in this particular way. If you go to another example in the same manuscript, in the same surah, in ayah 93, this is where this occurs. I'm going to zoom it in. And you can see here, it says, Naqra'uhu. So again, the form here, it's not on an alif, but with a wow. Now, of course, someone who's a student of Arabic with a very, very elementary knowledge of Arabic language will be very confused at saying, why is this, even though naqra, I'm reading ra with a fatha, but the hamza is now taking place in the form of a wow. Why is this? Uh, rather than an alif. Um, if they didn't know the rules, of course, they'll make mistakes. But if you know the rules, the hamza al-mutatarrifa becomes al-mutawassita here, and it takes these rules. Okay. Uh, I don't want to go into this detail, um, but that's because of the rules. It has this wow. If you take another example in the same surah in ayah 71, uh, it occurs here in the underlying red. And you can see here, it says, فَأُولَٰئِكَ فَأُولَمْ And then it says, يَا قَفْرَى wow. And this is the noon here, يَقْرَؤُونَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَقْرَؤُونَ So again, as you can see, ra مَفْتُوحَ and, the, and then you have the wow um, for the wu sound of the Hamza here. Another example from the same surah, ayah 45 just in this underlined space and if you were to zoom this in and you can see here it says وَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ so وَإِذَا and then قَفْرَ and then you have this alif there and the ta قَرَأْتَ as you can see here this form of alif another example in the same surah ayah 14 this occurs in this folio at this position if you were to zoom in and you can see here it says 
اقرا كتاب ابن سيسن دي في العمر فوم اقرا كتاب كفى سو هي الف او همزه قاف راء and then you have this hamza again or alif now if you go to surah 16 in ayah 98 in folio 37v by the way all the slides have the folio numbers um, if you have noticed um, and in this position underlined by red and if you were to go and you will see yeah, again فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ so this is the very uh, familiar ayah to most of you so you can see here قَرَأْتَ so you have قَفْرَ and then the Hamza here and the Ta there. Okay. Another example in Surat Yunus, Surah number 10, 94, in folio 18v, this is uh, occurs in at the end of the line, at the beginning of the line, the word is split, uh, quite usual in early Quranic manuscripts. And you can see, uh, let me move myself further up. So, Fas'al. So, Fas'al al-ladhina yaqra. So, ya qafra. And wow and noon. Yakraun al kitaba min public. So you, you you can clearly see here Yakraun in this form of the wow. Now we've seen several examples um does describe have a consistent pattern consistency in, in writing uh, the Hamza or the what would be the Hamza uh, if we were to go to some examples in Folio 25V of the same manuscripts, Surah Yusuf, Surah number 12, Ayah 53 occurs here in this folio. If we were to zoom in, you can see here it says, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمْرَةٌ بِالصُّ This is the ayah. So, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ So, wa mim alif and alif bara and here is your alif maqsura أُبَرِّئُ So, you can clearly see the alif maqsura is used because the ra has a kasra. So according to the rules of hamzaited verbs, you should have a alif maqsura here. It should not sit or be written as a wow or an alif, but like this ubarriu. Uh, one final example. Uh, if you see in Surah Yunus, ayah 41 in folio 16v of the same manuscript. Okay. Walakum amal. Um, antum bari'una wa ana bari'un mimma ta'amalun so here uh, nun tabim and bara and you can see here a kursi bari'un because the word bari is preceded by ra has a kasra and then you have an ya as well following by this wow sound so you this is why it's connected with this bari'un and wa ana bari'un so you have now ra kasra followed by the Hamza, now the Hamza sits on its own at the end with Alif Maqsura um, as indicated, as we said in the manuscript they didn't write Hamza at the very beginning, uh, this uh, tradition developed a bit later. So clearly consistent, uh, consistent patterns in writing uh, the word which is preceded with a Kasra, so you can see how it becomes Alif Maqsura. So what we've learned so far that um, it is very important to know the qawaid of imla, the principle, uh, the rules of writing, and especially when you have a word or a verb which is hamzated, you can have a verb with a hamza at the middle or the beginning or at the end. And our example was at the end and some of them in the middle um, because of this uh, uh, this domir or the pronouns that are attached to it. If you were to go to some classical uh, works and this is what you have Qur'a dhakara ad-daniyu anna al-hamzat al-mutatarrifata tursamu ya'an idha kana qablaha kasrun so he is saying ad-dani in his al-muqni he says that the hamza at the end the terminal hamza is written with a ya idha kana qablaha kasrun so if before it there was a kasra like Korea or Raha's a kasra, so this is how this form is written. It's not written as a wow or an alif. And Zakara Abu Dawood, Annahu fil Araf, Wal in Shikak, Tursamu al Hamzatu, Ya'an, Litatarufiha, Wa Kasrima Kablaha. So Abu Dawood, he writes that in Al Araf 7, 204 and al-inshiqaq these two places it is written with the hamza with the ya 
like his Quri'a because of the because the terminal Hamza and Wakasima Kabulha in a Kasra or the E sound, this vowel um, before it. So now we have a classical precedent in terms of how they understood the Mus'hafs should have been written. So what we have demonstrated, just going back again, that this particular scholar, unfortunately, you know, he needs to invest more time, perhaps learning the Arabic language, rather than producing, you know, very misleading and misguiding videos for his Patreons.